So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Laurel Mansfield, who's a thin film scientist at NREL and the technical monitor for the Cadmium Telluride Accelerator Consortium. Thanks, Harrison. Uh, I'll give you the brief agenda for today. We're going to have an introduction to the webinar, talk about the program overview and goals. Then we'll give you a lineup of the due dates for the RFP, talk about who's eligible to propose, and then how to propose and what submittals are required. This is a best value procurement process. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then we'll go over the evaluation criteria. So again, thanks everybody for attending either live or by recording. This solicitation is supported by the US Department of Energy Solar Energy Technologies Office. You can find out more information on it about on our website and you can go to nrel.gov and search cadmium telluride or go to the link that Harrison provided previously. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that the purpose of today's webinar is to highlight information in the RFP. We won't be discussing any new information uh, that will be done through RFP amendment. So again, if you have questions, please put them in the chat or email cdterfp at nrel.gov. So now let's go with the program overview and goals. Here's the background. Cadmium Telluride Photovoltaics is a leading PV technology built on US innovations that currently holds significant market share with domestic utility scale PV systems. In order to keep pace with a highly competitive and innovative global PV module market, CADTEL manufacturing needs readily adaptable advances at the cell and module levels that simultaneously enable higher conversion efficiencies and manufacturing cost reductions without risking long-term module durability. In pursuit of this goal, the Department of Energy Solar Energy Technologies Office has asked the National Renewable Energy Lab to launch and support a consortium to accelerate domestic CADTEL technology development through a competitive solicitation process. NREL will competitively select CADTEL consortium with the goals of enhancing U.S. competitiveness and expanding domestic CADTEL PV material and module production through 2030. NREL will provide coordination and oversight through development of technical scopes, review of technical proposals, subcontract support, and review of deliverables, along with research support to the consortium. The new consortium is expected to include major U.S. companies and universities that possess strong technology development, transfer, and validation capabilities. The research and analysis output of the CADTEL consortium will inform purchasing, design, deployment, and operations decisions of companies in the domestic PV supply chain, leading to increased material and module production in the U.S. After the new CADTEL consortium is formed, NREL's role will include acting as a resource, support network, and technical analysis center with the goal of expanding the size of the U.S. CADTEL supply chain. NREL is expected to, to support the consortium in the following ways. Support consortium efforts to develop a technology roadmap. Assist with stakeholder engagement for consortium meetings and events. Support as needed via applied research efforts, including measurement and characterization support. Support consortium in launching additional research efforts in order to meet the various targets set by the consortium's technology roadmap. Administer solicitations, review and award subcontracts for the selected technology development and demonstration projects. The consortium lead will provide guidance on which projects it believes hold the most promise and NREL will recommend the selections to DOE CETO for final approval. The CADTEL consortium will bring together the national lab and university research infrastructure and the CADTEL photovoltaic supply chain to discover, develop, de-risk, and enable the commercialization of new materials and designs for CADTEL modules with the intent to increase the levelized cost of, <laughs> pardon me, to decrease the levelized cost of electricity towards CETO's 2030 goals. Yes, we want to decrease the levelized cost of electricity. So the objectives are as follows. The main goal here of this RFP 
is to select the CADTEL consortium lead that provides the best proposal to enable U.S. Com competitiveness and increase domestic CADTEL PV material and module production through 2030 while decreasing the levelized cost of electricity towards CEDAW's 2030 goals. A cadmium telluride consortium will bring together companies who are members of the CADTEL supply chain, along with research centers to work on the most important challenges in the U.S. CADTEL production. The goals of the consortium are to A, develop a technology roadmap that will enable the long-term competitiveness of CADTEL PV in the U.S. B, enhance U.S. technology leadership and competitiveness in CADTEL photovoltaics by doing the following. Enabling cell efficiencies above 24% and sustainable module prices below 20 cents per watt for domestic CADTEL modules by 2025. Enabling cell efficiencies above 26% and sustainable module prices below 15 cents per watt for domestic CADTEL modules by 2030. And progressing towards the goals set by the consortium's CADTEL technology roadmap. We also want to expand domestic CADTEL PV material and module production and continue to drag down the cost of CADTEL PV systems through 2030. So we do have a list of expected consortium activities. The first is to develop a CADTEL technology roadmap. The details of that include updating the roadmap annually to maintain US technology leadership in CADTEL PV. Include input from stakeholders through engagement activities. Include technology performance targets and high priority research areas to help achieve them. The next ex expected activity is to assess the domestic CADTEL supply chain. This includes updating the assessment regularly to identify any critical material or capacity constraints. Compile input from stakeholders, including investors. Identify technology transfer opportunities and conduct feasibility analysis of new technologies. Facilitate the transfer of promising technologies to U.S. manufacturers. Determine whether opportunities exist to expand and enhance the U.S. manufacturing base or to increase the domestic content of CADTEL PV systems. The next activity is to conduct core research projects. The details are develop and launch research projects within consortium institutions, that would be the consortium lead and the consortium partners, and in collaboration with other institutions, such as CENREL, to meet targets set within the technology roadmap. Projects are led by the consortium lead, consortium partner institutions, or NREL. The next expected activity is to advise NREL on launching additional projects to meet CADTEL technology roadmap targets. The additional projects are expected to be solicited on a rolling basis in the following two categories. One, external research, research projects. Those would be monitored by a representative from a company, led by entities other than for-profit companies, and engage a high priority area that will support US manufacturing. Two, external development projects. Those will be led by for profit companies and their partners. They can include product development, technology validation, feasibility analysis, and demonstration. Selections for these will be made by NREL with guidance from the consortium lead and partners and approval from CETO. The next expected activity is to identify new members and capabilities for the consortium. This includes searching for new opportunities to grow and diversify the market, supply chain, and research community, and identify opportunities for staff exchange and strategic partnerships between U.S. companies. So relevant technical areas could include these, but they're not limited. So we'll go through these quickly. Possible cell improvements include increased photovoltage by overcoming fundamental material issues such as recombination and low carrier concentration, absorber modifications for improving CADTEL hole density such as group five doping, reduced interface recombination through passivation, reflectors, and or fields, 
create new cell architectures to increase module efficiency, improve transparent back context to enable them tan to enable tandems and bifacial modules, conduct surveys of potential new cell technologies to ensure long-term reliability. Module improvements could include components that increase performance, for example, energy output over the module lifetime, durability and or safety, components that reduce manufacturing costs while maintaining or improving durability and performance, module architecture suitable for residential and or commercial rooftop applications, processes, components, or module designs that improve the ability and or decrease the cost to recycle PV modules. Characterization technical areas could include combined theory and experiments to describe material interactions, methods that improve the understanding of active versus inactive dopants in cad -tel. develop methods suitable for high throughput manufacturing, techniques for measuring band alignment and electron density in finished devices. Manufacturing technical areas could include equipment or synthesis innovations that increase factory throughput, advances in synthesis methods that reduce manufacturing costs, areas that the supply chain analysis could include, are defining gaps in the domestic supply chain and working to improve its efficiency and quality. Understand the competitiveness of US facilities, including quantifying the materials, labor, and capex. And analyze material shipping costs and any applicable duties, sales taxes, and or tariffs across borders. So we have a lot of possible areas here. We would expect that there may be more. So feel free to put forth your best ideas. So here's the expected funding breakdown. We are expecting phase one funding will go to the consortium lead and the consortium partners. This will be a 36 month scope of work that will be funded under this solicitation. This work will be conducted directly by the consortium lead and the consortium partners, and the funding amount for this is $9 million. We have the potential of a phase two funding. No action is required at this time on phase two, but we wanted to make you aware that it may become available pending, of course, available fiscal appropriations, successful completion of phase one, and successful bilateral negotiations. This would be consortium lead and consortium par partners embarking on phase two, which would expand upon and enhance work started in phase one. The project objectives for phase two would be identified in the CAD -TEL technology roadmap that is created and updated in phase one. And of course, upon a completion of phase one, Enron will make a go no go decision based upon its sole judgment whether or not to authorize a phase two. The go no go decision will depend on the availability of federal funds and the successful outcome of phase one. So, again, no action required at this time. There will be NREL funding for consortium projects as defined in this RFP. The funding would go to NREL and the research and analysis that would happen would be in support of the consortium as defined in this RFP. The work will be conducted at NREL at the discretion of the consortium and the funding amount for that would be $1.5 million. There's also potential funding for future to other external partners, and this is pending appropriations. So the funding would go to external partners. This would include external projects that are launched in order to gain access to new expertise or capabilities. This work will take place at institutions outside of the consortium and consortium partners. These projects will be suggested by the consortium, solicited by NREL under a competitive process that will be separate from this RFP. The potential Funding for that would be $3 million. So now I'm going to turn this over to Bill Peters. He's our NREL subcontract administrator for this RFP and for the proposed subcontract. Thank you, Lorel. How is my audio coming through? 
You sound good. Great. So, um, next slide. Yeah, I wanted to first go over a few dates. The next thing that you'll be expecting is the, uh, the deadline for questions. And as Harrison said, you may submit questions in the chat box. And also, uh, you can send them to cdterfp at nrel.gov. And then we'll collect all the questions and we'll provide answers through an RFP amendment We'll post that on the uh, SAM.gov site. And the reason for this is that we want to make sure that all the respondents get the same information. Uh, please don't contact Laurel or any of the program people with these questions. Please send them uh, either in the chat box or through the um, CDTE RFP at NREL.gov email account. We expect that we would uh, provide questions to these answers uh, probably about a week after we after the deadline of June 21st. So around June 28th or so, we would expect to publish a RFP amendment uh, responding to all the questions. The response due date to the RFP is July 19th, and we anticipate uh, award selection in September of this year. Next slide. So I wanted to go over a few definitions. Uh, we'll be using these definitions or these terms quite a bit throughout the RFP and the program. And these are definitions uh, for purposes of this RFP and for this project. So the first definition, the consortium. That is an association of two or more companies, universities, or organizations with the objective of participating in common activities and pooling their resources to enable U.S. Competitiveness, competitiveness in CDTE, photovoltaic, and increase domestic CAD-TEL PV material and module production while decreasing the levelized cost of electricity. Next definition, consortium lead or the offerer responsible for submitting the proposal on behalf of their organization and the consortium partners. In addition to participating as a technical partner, partner on consortium research projects, the consortium lead may be asked to act in a facilitating capacity on behalf of the consortium. This would include organizing meetings, reviewing results, and reports with consortium partners, and working closely with NREL to coordinate consortium activities. Next term, consortium partners. The co-leaders or partners teaming with the consortium lead the consortium lead will submit the information required for the consortium partners in the proposal. NREL will make awards to the successful consortium lead in each consortium partner. NREL will also review and approve deliverables for the consortium lead in each consortium partner. Next slide. It is the intent of NREL to award to one consortium under this solicitation. This consortium may be composed of multiple funded consortium partners, including, but not limited to, industry, universities, and nonprofit organizations. NREL will be responsible for awarding all subcontracts under this solicitation, including to the consortium lead and any other consortium partners. In addition, NREL will obligate funding for all work efforts under each subcontract and payments will be sent directly from NREL to this corresponding consortium partners. So that's to the lead and to the other consortium partners. It is anticipated that the initial NREL funding available for this solicitation will not exceed $9 million for the anticipated 36-month duration of the phase one work effort. So that's a not to exceed or a ceiling you can certainly come in under that as, that as this is the best value procurement. Additional funding and scope may be authorized in additional phases, which may be negotiated between the parties. As Laurel said, this, is, uh, this may or may not happen. This is purely for informational purposes, and you are not expected to provide any information in regard to the additional phases as part of this proposal. NREL will be responsible for awarding all subcontracts under the solicitation, 
including to the consortium lead and any other consortium partners. In addition, NREL will obligate funding for all work efforts under each subcontract and payments will be sent directly from NREL to the corresponding consortium partners. Next slide. Who is eligible to propose? Project teams may be led by a consortium lead that is a for-profit business, educational institution, or nonprofit. The consortium lead and consortium partners must be incorporated or otherwise formed under the laws of the state or territory of the United States. Project teams are strongly encouraged to have significant participation from industrial partners. Consortium will be evaluated based on the degree to which they include non-federal resources. RFP submissions are limited to one consortium lead organization. State, local, and tribal government entities are only eligible to propose as a consortium partner. Foreign entities, whether for-profit or otherwise, are eligible to participate within a project team as a lower tier subcontractor, but are not eligible to apply as a consortium lead, nor are they eligible to receive funding as a consortium partner under this RFP. Next slide. How to propose. The RFP will be found here. That's the link to the, um, to the SAM.gov. Um, one of the things just to note is that when you go to the SAM.gov site, please search the entire page uh, to make sure that you have all the information. Uh, at, the, at the bottom of the page, you'll see RFP history, and there uh, you may find some RFP amendments. Uh, and I say this because depending upon what link you follow to come into the SAM.gov site, uh, you may, uh, I just want to make sure that you get the most current version. So search the entire site, in particular under RFP history, to make sure that you capture all of the RFP amendments so that you get the most up-to-date information. So um, how to propose the, um, and this is a just a high-level summary of what you'll need to submit for the proposal. Uh, please see Table 12.1 in the RFP for more detail on the following sections. Uh, there's quite a bit of information that we're going to ask you to submit in response to this proposal. A cover page, a high-level summary, team composition, capabilities and work plan, initial technology roadmap, an overview of supply chain analysis and business support, references and bibliography, resumes, CVs, list of government contracts, that are related to this work effort, price summary sheet, proposed deliverables milestone payment schedule for that proposed price, representations and certifications for subcontracts, purchase orders, organizational conflicts of interest form, and a proposal cover letter. Uh, like I say, this is a high level summary. Please, please uh, there's much more detail on what's required here in the RFP. Please read that detail and provide uh, exactly what is what is uh, requested um, in the RFP. Next slide. We are awarding this uh, these proposed subcontracts under a best value procurement process. So, what does that mean? Uh, solicitation will be conducted using best value selection that results in the selection of submitted proposals for potential subcontract award that is most advantageous to NREL based upon the best value combination of evaluated qualitative merit and evaluated price of the, of the proposal submitted. So what does best value mean? Best value selection is based on the premise that if all proposals are of approximately equal qualitative merit, the award would be made to those with the lowest evaluated price. However, NREL will consider selecting proposals with a higher evaluated price if the offer demonstrates the difference in price is commensurate with a higher qualitative merit. Conversely, NREL will consider selecting proposals with a lower evaluated qualitative merit 
if the price differential between it and the other proposals warrants doing so. Next slide. So these are the evaluation criteria. There are two of them equally weighted. There's much more detail in the RFP relative to these evaluation criteria. There are a lot of sub criteria below each one of these criteria. Uh, please read this, read the criteria, and respond to each and every sub criteria under these criteria. The criteria. So the first criteria is impact of the proposal relative to state of the art technical merit and the objectives is stated, the objectives that are stated in the RFP. The second criterion is team composition, capabilities, and work plan. And next slide, I think that might be the end. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it back to Laurel for the closing comments. So thanks everyone again for attending this webinar. Um, please submit your questions either in the chat box or to cdterfp at nrel.gov. We really look forward to the exciting proposals that will be coming in for this consortium solicitation. Thanks again, have a great day.